All right, I thought today would be a good day for another vlog. I think once a week is a good vlog pace. Maybe two, I don't know, but definitely once isn't too much. And uh, I, I guess I was thinking today, looking back at some of my failures, what happened was this. I got a letter from a subscriber who talked about how he was on the edge of suicide and that uh, and he defined some of the things that, that were that led him to get there uh, one of them was he had an internship uh, he's in high school based on what I could tell but he had an internship over the summer that he was really excited about and thought would be a, a stepping stone towards something great and it it wasn't and I think they let him go or fired him or like it definitely didn't work out he didn't get the letter of recommendation and stuff like that that he was hoping for uh, he's failing a couple classes in school that's not good right you know He's having legit failures, and, and then this is off topic, but he also had some family troubles that, uh, that sucked, that were worse than anything I had. And <clears throat> what he was doing wrong <laughs> was letting his failures define him. And, and I just thought I'd share some of my own, you know, some of the stuff that, that I screwed up along the way. And uh, <laughs> so everybody knows my high school grades were terrible. I'll talk about that and fast forward because you've heard it before. I graduated with a 1.98 GPA which really only means something to my American subscribers, but uh, it's pretty much a, a failure of a, of a GPA. <laughs> Some schools don't even let you graduate. It's 2.0 or no go. But uh, uh, my grades were terrible, terrible. And um, when I was 17, I, I tried to hang myself. Uh, my regular subscribers have heard this story before. Uh, what you haven't heard is some of the older stuff. Somewhere around like 19 or something, I... Um, I went to night school and started supporting myself by working in my father's accounting office. And uh, I was there for a couple years and I went to work for this company called Railroad Construction Company. And uh, they built railroads as you might guess and they also built highways and things like that. It's like rail and road, get it? So um, uh, I was, my title was like manager of accounts payable and receivables. But the truth is there was one part-time guy under me. so. You know, manager isn't, isn't it? It wasn't like I was some sort of hot shot. Um, and the job involved, when, when you buy something, they give you like a little receipt proving that you actually bought it, like it was delivered. And I had to match that up with the bills so we didn't pay for anything that wasn't delivered. And, uh, and then pay it. And, and at the end of the week, I would have this list of like hundreds of checks and different things that, that the company bought for my boss to approve. And it was a nightmare to, to keep up with all that paperwork. I, I guess at work, I probably worked maybe 70 hours a week trying to keep up with that. And then when you add the fact that I went to night school, uh, at, like for college or university, if you're um, uh, international, if you add, you know, I'm going to go this way. If you add to that workload, I probably worked about 110 115 hours a week. I worked a lot. Uh, every second I was awake, I worked. And that was the start of me developing a good work ethic. But I was failing. I was failing at work. I knew things weren't going well. Uh, sometimes things would be paid late. Not very late. My boss paid every bill he got at the end of the week. And most companies wait like 30 days. But just the same, he didn't even want to be that guy where it took two weeks to get paid. And with me at the, at the helm, sometimes he was that guy. And that made him really mad. Um, at school, I failed every class, every class. I took three classes at night school, sorry about that. I took three night school classes and I failed every single one. Uh, part of it was, it was snowy and I had a long commute from work to school and I would just, even though I tried, I'd show up to class like two hours late because a, a one hour drive would become like a three hour drive when there's snow on the ground. and. Uh, that was a big failure for me, and like the F's in school, perhaps I had been conditioned to that, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, all right, so I got some F's at school, and they put me on probation, but it, I, by that point, I had tried all the grades and, and sort of knew that I could recover from it if, if I worked at it, but the work thing, I had never failed at work before, and something about getting fired from a job felt so personal. It felt like um, like they had measured my human worth and found it not good enough like they had said you know like Woody 
You've been here for six months. We've given this a good go. I can see you're trying really hard. This just isn't the job for you. My, um, my boss even offered to recommend me for my next job as he fired me. Uh, because you know, he's like, you work incredibly hard. You're just not good at this job. <laughs> and, uh, and it hurt like a lot. Like, like, you know, it, it makes you feel like a loser. It, um, <laughs> I, it, I don't know if you've ever been fired from a job you were trying at, you know, it, but it, it's like, it, he had my best effort and it wasn't good enough. And, uh, something about that measurement made me feel bad, you know, it, bad doesn't fully cover it. It, it made me feel worthless. Like it, it made me feel like I wasn't okay. And, um, on top of that, so I had branched out and lived on my own, been my own man. And I was kind of proud of being an adult. And after I got fired, I moved back home and I lived with my parents, uh, little things. Like one thing I remember, you know, growing up, the rule in my house is my father picked the TV show. It's how my house was growing up. It's not, how, it would be nice if my house was like that, but uh, growing up, my dad would pick the TV show. So I'd be watching something and I'd have like the remote on my lap or maybe next to me on the couch. My father would literally like walk in, take the remote from next to me and put on a show I didn't like. It, it was some kind of reminder of my failure. Like, oh, you know, <laughs> you were once the king of your own castle, Woody. You know, in my, my apartment, low income housing unit, but <laughs> It was something I was doing, right? Something I was earning. And when I moved back home and lived with my parents, it, spe it felt like a special kind of failure. Like, like something, like a, an acknowledgement of how I didn't succeed out in the real world. <sighs> and where this is all headed, you know, between the high school failure and, you know, the, the failure in college grades and, uh, you know, the failure in, in one of my jobs is that the road to success is littered with failure, right? That's a cliche and you kind of know what it means. But um, the letter I got from a guy today indicated that he didn't know that, that, that he thought bad grades were a dead end and that that was like his possibility of being a winner was done with. Um, I, I see people who give something a go and quit all the time. And, you know, that's, that's not how winners are made. You know, winners are not people who got lucky and won. Winners are people who kept trying until they won. You know, winners are people who, who keep going until they eventually found success. There's lots of failure on the way there. It's, that's how it goes. It's hard and it's demoralizing and it makes you doubt yourself. <laughs> that makes you doubt yourself is a critical thing. Like, uh, I, I work with this woman, Tracy, it's her first name, and uh, she was getting fired at Cisco, and she was coming to me for help, right? Because she, she was on what they called a, a performance improvement plan, and uh, it basically meant, we're going to be looking at how you're doing over the next 90 days, and we're going to see if it makes sense to keep you. And she was in tears talking to me, in a, like the, on a balcony where no one else was, saying like, my gosh, you know, they define me as this. And they start to make me think that it's true. You know, it, this is a girl who was smart. She graduated college in two years, or university in two years at, at an accelerated pace. She finished high school a year early. She was like 20 years old. <laughs> and she had the job of someone who would be like 25 or 26. And suddenly by being put on a performance improvement plan they made her think she was stupid and that she wasn't worthy and that's what that's what failures do to you um you know i got my joe lozon shirt on right now he doesn't win every fight you know nobody wins every fight the difference between a guy like him who's been in the ufc for like a decade now i probably have that wrong but it's been a long time who's uh, tied as the most bonus fighter, submission of the night, fight of the night, knockout of the night, in the history of the UFC, is that you know, even when he you know, trips up and doesn't win a fight, he doesn't let that define him. He, he doesn't let, you know, he 
to hear Joe, he's ah, I'm awesome, whatever, you know, I'll move on. I always come back stronger than ever. And and he does. And, uh, you know, you, you, you see your failure, you, you figure out what went wrong, and you, you come back a better guy. So, <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite things about him. Um, that inability to be knocked off of your personal sense of self-worth and the ability to, to try again after things go wrong, that's what helps you win. You know, it, it's not the winning streak. <laughs> it, it, like I was saying earlier, you know, people think that, like, I tried it, I lost, you tried it, you won. Congratulations. That's not how it goes. I lost, I lost, I lost, I lost, and then I won. And... You know, to the guy that wrote me the, the letter today, and I replied to you too, um, <laughs> I know things are rough right now, you know, but you're 17, and you know, things are rough for a lot of people at 17. The difference is, it gets better, and it gets better partly because you just get out of that social nightmare that is high school, and partly because you keep getting chances to make it better, and if you... <laughs> keep trying and trying then you succeed and things go well for you so um, that's today's vlog I, I guess you know I don't know I worry that this whole thing is cliche that this whole thing is is obvious but you know, to everyone who's ever had a, a bump in the road and let it define them that that doesn't go you know, start right now, redefine yourself, and do what it takes to meet your goals. That's, uh, that's what separates the guys who rise to the top from those who don't. So, I hope you enjoyed the vlog.